Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop, and this week we have a fabulous guest. Lori Allen is joining us. Say hello, Lori. Hi. Hi, guys. Now, Thank you so much for having me. All right. This is going to be great. We're going to talk about all sorts of cool stuff and her, and her dogs and whatever else we can come up with. And you got cool stuff too, George, right? Of course. Lots of tech gadgetry. And I know more about Lori Studio than Lori does, so that'll be fun. <laughs> all right. <laughs> All this oh, stuff coming up right really now on VoiceOver Body Shop. From the outer reaches, they came, bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, Remote Studio Connections for Everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Greetings. I am Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Is that our new theme music for coming in or whatever? That would be hitting the wrong button. Oh, I hope you I go for the right it. button. Oh, and okay. what made it even more fun is I couldn't hear it that I hit the wrong button. So I couldn't oh. even do anything about it. But I hope you enjoyed that. Well, okay. All right. Whatever. <laughs> it's Live broadcasting. Yes. That's that's yeah, exactly okay. it. Can we take that again? No, I'm just All kidding. All right. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> Well, it, it, yeah, we're we're all fully vaccinated, so uh, we're Isn't we're getting ready good? to go back out into the world and do yeah. field work, which George and I have horrendously missed. Because I had the this, weirdest field work ever today. Would you? I do? had the field work come to me. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> I had Eliza Jane Snyder pull up in a in a sprinter van into my front curb. I'm like wow, if all studios were mobile, that would be so cool. It, just come it, to me. Come to, to me. To your place. Exactly. No, it is. It is very nice to be able to uh, to be over to co mingle and do it safely. And it's. Uh, I'm I'm doing the I'm doing the the mask awareness thing. That's the new thing. You wear it on one wrist. You just keep oh. your mask here. It says, "I'm woke" or whatever you want to call it. People hate that term. And oh. I'm aware, and I have my mask, but I am vaccinated. But if you needed me to put on my mask, it's right here. So all you have yeah. to do is put it on your wrist. Yeah. I've been, I've been wearing mine as a yarmulke. You know, <laughs> just sort of putting it back. And... Why well, didn't it? Well, it should have been some two-for-ones <laughs> yarmulke right. masks. Did anybody figure that one out? <laughs> uh, no. I'm in, no. But uh, anyway. I thought you it's... guys had a sense of humor. Come on. <laughs> we try. No, right now. Anyway, uh, we have got a great show tonight because we have a fabulous guest who we, she's our favorite guest because we like her when she comes into our studio, which of course we can't do quite yet. Big energy and big hugs. Big hugs, which is the yeah. thing I think I miss the most out of this pandemic is getting hugs. For sure. And uh, because she gives good hugs, but she's also a fabulous talent. Uh, Lori Allen has played a long-running role in as Pearl Krabs in the animated television series SpongeBob SquarePants. She also voiced Diane Simmons on The Family Guy, The Invisible Woman on Fantastic Four, The Boss in Metal Gear video game series, and a whole lot more. Welcome back, 
to voiceover body shop, the one and only Lori Allen. Yay. Yay. And there Thank she you is. for having me and my new rescue fan who needs a bath. Luckily, yeah. you can't smell him. Hi, guys. Wow. Uh, it looks like he's part corgi, part chihuahua. What is he? He's, he's part loud. Like his mom's <laughs> pearl crabs. They think he's like a shipper key. We had a first training session. A shipper key. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a shipper key. I'm not saying it right. Part shipper key and chihuahua. Ooh, his breath. He's very cute <sighs> and he's very sweet. And he he licks your tears when I was crying, except he barks so loud that it makes my, it goes up my spine like, ah. I have to sing. I have to do something to counteract the shrillness of the barking. But Does it help you that, forget about what you're crying great. about at least? I mean, there's got to yes. be some fringe benefit to that. Yeah, there are. I mean, he's, he really is. A key. He likes to get rowdy. My other dog, Bumble, which George knows very well from coming over cuddly and cuddly Bumble fixing stuff. Um, uh, Bumble is so cuddly and Finn is teaching him how to be a little bit of a dog instead of just a foofy little figure. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Bringing bringing in another dog when you already have a dog is always an interesting experience because you get to see who the alpha dog is. You you know we've got, you know we we brought a a pound pup in and and suddenly you know it's like she has to wait until Ari eats. Oh yeah, you know? and and then Ari's like I'm not hungry and she'll just sit there and you gotta eat. What's I going gotta on? Eat. Here? <laughs> yeah, he's a little um he's a little bossy boots, but he's not food protect protected. He's not emotionally eating like I've been doing for a year. Oh. So he's staying very thin, unlike myself. You know. <laughs> I think we I all have be, our coping mechanisms. You're doing just time, fine. Right? You're yeah. Doing yeah. Just fine. Don't be so Thanks. hard on yourself. Yeah. Fortunately, food is one of those really good things to cope with. Uh anyway, no. so so you you're a busy lady, I know that. But how did the pandemic affect you and in, in, in your career? You know, it's really interesting. Everything is, I th everything just, of course, came to a screeching halt. Like it was just, we were all in so much fear. I mean, it's so interesting how the, just the PTSD of all of our lives, personal, forget professional, right? For a moment, but that was certainly just sort of shocking. The whole, you know, your whole life just sort of goes, what? And changes. And I, I really feel like everything just shut down. And then all of a sudden it exploded, absolutely exploded because as a, also as a coach, like I was like, let's let's work on your COVID read, right? Because commercials, as everybody knows, are changing. We're changing like every week with the read of like, now it's really serious. We had a surge. Now it's warm and friendly because it's the summer and everybody, you can be outside safely doing a barbecue or whatever, right? So everything was literally, it still is changing one week at a time. And you look at commercials and you're like, why are they in masks? Oh, that's right. Because that's what's actually going on in our real life. And then a lot of animated series so a lot of the auditions that I've been doing and a handful of bookings have been really cool new shows about hope and about acceptance. And, you know, with all of what's been going on, on in the world, you know, between civil unrest and, and, you know, who being out of office. So things are just about positivity and, you know, giving hope, inspiring hope. The read is very different. So I've been working on that with myself big time and then with clients, of course, and it's very interesting. So it actually, it's actually busier than ever uh, after like sort of just a, you know, paralyzation of like, what, what the <laughs> hell is going on? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much. Yeah. There's a lot of, we're going to do it together. I mean, oh that yeah. Seemed, that's, that seemed to be the, the dominant uh, theme for a while there. Together and now it's like apart. Okay. Yes. And not, now careful. we can be together, together. And now, yes, of course the CDC, I was like, at least you could buy me dinner first. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> could you have gotten some of that clear? So now we're freaks like, and we're back. And it was like, wait a second. I was, you know, it's, it's on the toilet. Like, you know what I mean? Like you have to give us a little bit of notice before like, <laughs> and we're all back doing the honor system. Um, got invited right. to a cool concert. And I was like, I don't know if I'm ready yet. Like, I'm just, mm. I'm not sure I'm ready yet. Like, I'm not sure I'm willing to still have that slight chance like Bill Maher, who's mm. completely fine. The only reason I bet you a million bucks he would have ever known is that. He was testing for his show, you know, but the transmission rate, the the viral load, the shedding and all that stuff, I think is so unlikely that we're probably ready. But um, it just was a little shocking, you know, but the the to the to the reads, they really are there. Everything is together. Everything is warm and everything is very real, 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 except for stuff like McDonald's, you know, in terms of commercial like McDonald's, like that stuff is always very bright. Mm -hmm. And there's certain things that are always going to be McDonald's wants you to forget there's a pandemic. Right. That's right. They just want to raise your cholesterol. But <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I think that the the reads are definitely brighter. They're 
I mean, not brighter. Some things will always, like I said, be bright, but a warmer. And they're all about like getting away. So, you know, car sales, like redoing your house, right? Like stuff like that is definitely what I'm seeing. Um, do you, do you ever ask the director, like, is this commercial acknowledging the existence of the pandemic or is it denying it and wanting you to just feel really good right now? <laughs> do you ever ask them, does that question ever come up? Like, do you have to ask now, that question? You know what? It's people really, it's become such a political issue. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't dare get into that conversation with anyone that's in a position to hire me. We yeah. have discussions about it. Once you sort of put a feeler out and you're like, so I let, like what you were talking about. I'm wearing my mask as a bracelet. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a really like a personal choice. It's become something that's not based in science, unfortunately for a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean to offend anyone in that regard. I've just lost a lot of people. My mom and mm -hmm. stepdad who are, you know, um, folks that order in only and even stop doing social distance golf. My stepdad, they got it terribly. I mean, thank God as a lung cancer survivor and now a COVID survivor, she's like back to, well, we had cocktails with so-and-so like they're doing great. You know what I mean? But it's um, she's tough as nails. Elena. Yeah, she sure is. And I think you know her. So it's just, it's like, you just want to say, I want to say to some people like, have you lost anybody? Have all of your best friends in New York gotten it? Have you lost your aunt? Have you lost, did you almost lose mm. your parents? Like, mm. I just want to shake somebody. My niece got it. Like, thank God she's fine. You know, again, from mm -hmm. she's got a little pod of people and uh, from a really cool music school, they're all living together. And one girl got it from work. She doesn't know how. She was masked and careful. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, I vote for still being wildly careful uh, because this isn't going to go away. We're going to get a, probably another little mini surge or two. Well, and then our voiceover reads and stuff will be different. Have not gone back into a studio yet, myself personally. Um, work well, from plus home you're a voice actor. Like if you got sick enough, this could ruin not only your health, but your, it could affect your career. Your voice, yeah. It, really. and, exactly. And because I do do on camera, I've worked on camera three times. On, so I can't, I can say it. I'm not supposed to say it, but I worked on Curb Your Enthusiasm. So that was really exciting. Ooh. I couldn't curb my enthusiasm. It was amazing. <laughs> I could, I rarely get starstruck, but I was like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was just yeah. too cool. <laughs> But I thought, holy crap, if I tested positive, just shut that production down. I don't want that reputation. You know, I heard yeah. a casting director, and I really believe it goes the same for once we are back in the studio, if you end up still having to get tested or not. I do not want that slight chance of knowing that I could have unknowingly given it to somebody. I mean, the chances are so slim. I was reading some statistics today, but then Bill Maher fits into that tiny statistic. You know, yeah. if he hadn't been tested, he would have never known. And then somebody asymptomatic, I mean, somebody who had immune compromised issues or who decided not to get vaccinated um, could have easily gotten it and then spread it to somebody else. So we just still have to be really, really, mm. really careful, especially as the summer goes on um, and people are, you know, wanting to party and all that stuff outside. Luckily, you know, we're doing okay, but the winter months, we still have to be absolutely vigilant. And for the rest of our lives, like this isn't going away, but as Scott Parkin brought up a good point. He's like, it'll just be more like the common cold or a sore throat. So hopefully, and, and what we're finding out is that the vaccines are much better than we thought at the transmission situation. So that's actually great news. You know, yeah, well, and it's that, not even just about being being the one who spread it, but it's also if you did get sick, it it you may not be able to work for a week, two weeks, a month. Oh my gosh, you you several months. Yeah. Like yeah. <clears throat> yeah, hungry yeah. boy I mean, in I chat asthma. says uh, a coughing fit could alter your voice permanently yeah. yeah oh gosh yeah it makes my voice so tired and we have fires and fire season coming up so it's like this is i have no problems being like i'm not comfortable with that yet or uh i have um i i talk for a living so i just need to be extra careful i think you're right. when people get into like having to apologize for the choices you're making i'm just not comfortable yet but thank you so much for the invite you know things like that right. it's perfectly okay to be like i have my thumb up my butt and that's why i'm not able to make it it doesn't matter you're just not comfortable <laughs> yet that's matter. okay yeah. that's right you know what that I mean? makes sense that's right if you're just yeah. joining us we are talking with Lori allen uh star of all sorts of stuff uh you're probably familiar with all the work that she's done if you have a question for her if you personally have a question for it, I mean, not too personal, but uh, you can throw it in the chat room on Facebook. You can throw it in the chat room in YouTube. You can throw it. If you happen to be listening live on Clubhouse, we can get you on. You can personally ask your question uh, as, as Danny Burnside is uh, is hosting our, our, our Clubhouse broadcast at the moment as well. So we'll be getting to that in a little bit, uh, but put it in the chat rooms and uh, we will get those questions on. Uh, let me ask you this. You've, you've done so many interesting things. You've had a fabulous career and it, 
and I, I admit you're having a fabulous career. Let's put it that Aww, way. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, you know, because you're 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 going to continue doing these things. Uh, but what's been the favorite project you've worked on? I have to say, it's not just because it's still happening, but Pearl Crabs on SpongeBob SquarePants is just absolutely the the most joyful gig I've ever had. I mean, I can't even believe that I booked Family Guy and SpongeBob in the same year. I don't even know if I could have appreciated it. Plus, I was in a state of shock. Um, Family Guy was absolutely amazing. I mean, I haven't been on the show for, I got, my character got killed off a couple, couple of, well, like probably like 10 or 12 years at this point, but SpongeBob SquarePants and the way that the show just keeps like reinventing itself. And now we have um, Camp Coral, which is so fun. Cause I get to be a baby cause it's about us when we were little. So I get to be like, so that's really fun. And then there's the Patrick Star show. So there's two little spinoffs. So that has just been joyful. Is to forget have the, gra- the the immense gratitude to our amazing creator who passed away several years ago, Stephen Hillenburg. But the the joy that is you know, and now and of course Tom Kinney's been directing. Who plays SpongeBob? He's an amazing director, huh. and he's just phenomenal. So he's directing all three. So it's really cool to. I mean, you know, to 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 be with those people. I miss being in the studio so hard because like you'll just laugh and ruin an entire take. Like I'll have to leave the room <laughs> and I have my asthma inhaler because I'm I don't get asthma attacks from anything other than crying and laughing. And I'm it's just I miss that so much. But I really think that's my most uh my most joyful favorite much gig of, the, of all time. How much of the crew is common from show to show? I mean not on the technical very common back end, yeah. but all the way through mostly. Yeah, and, you know. in fact, I know there are different uh, il- illustrators, the drawers, yeah. the people that yeah. do the drawing, <laughs> yeah. on um, because it's very it's very different. It's like CG and all that stuff. So there are there is a change of hands, but in terms of the executive side, it's the same, which is really interesting because they're all so wildly different, wildly mm. different. Um, but yeah, a lot of the the folks are the same, and um, the, a lot of the the heads up at the at Nickelodeon are are different. But the same vibe and that same just sweet, innocent character and all the craziness that ensues um, is the is the same. So yeah. but but so different. I mean, artistically to look at it, it's kind of magnificent. The other thing to be a part of that um, that was so ridiculously uh, just to be a part of the Pixar family to do like Toy Story three and four. Like that still is like pinch me. Just the premiere alone. Again, I don't get starstruck very easily, but I was like, hi, Keanu Reeves. <laughs> 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 You're really cute. Yeah. Um, but so that that was that's that's just ridiculous. And then I started off my career with like Fantastic Four, you know, and meeting Stan Lee. I look back at it and I feel a thousand years old, and like I'm twenty years old all at the same time, you know. Yeah, I mean, you've been doing. I mean, SpongeBob started what nineteen ninety eight was it? Somewhere 90, around ninety nine. Ninety nine. Yeah. 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 I mean, my kids grew up with it, so you know, it's like I know we're on our fourth generation. You know, yeah. like I'll get those cameo shout outs or when we could be in person because I really miss being in person. It's so hard to 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 be able to go to conventions and say hi to people. Yeah. And they're like, my grandkids, we all watch it together and stuff like that. You know, the crazy thing is, oh, and also Metal Gear Solid, that game to play that character, the boss is just it's oh, look, at I have her on my desk. Somebody said <laughs> <laughs> she's yeah, we on talked my about desk this because last I needed her running. to be a badass. Yeah, wow. he's amazing. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> she's amazing. So she is the mother of all mothers. A couple of people tweeted to me, on, no, Finn, you cannot have this. It's not a toy. But a couple of folks tweeted at me on Mother's Day, and they're like, happy Mother's Day. And I just was sort of joking right back, I am your mother. And people were like, oh, my God. You know, she is a <laughs> badass character. I wish she could be president. That's what I wish. I wish she could um, be a real person. The thing about play. games, like, we don't, I mean, if you're not a gamer, you don't know how big the games are. But the games yeah. can have a bigger fan base than the shows. The Absolutely. Most, yeah. And yeah. it, it's fun watching people on your show, like yourself, our show, who, when you see the comments, like who's coming on, they say, oh, it's the boss. You know, they, yeah. they, they know you for different reasons. So right. they get really excited for different reasons. They, it's, yeah. It's, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. She, um, she's pretty awesome. Yeah. We're, we're talking with L'Oreal. Once again, if you got a question, uh, throw it in all those places I mentioned, wherever it is you're watching. Here's the thing that I really wanted to get into with you. Um, now you were professionally trained to do what you do. You, I mean, you've been acting your entire life. You know, it's, I have my my. I'm lucky. I'm so grateful. I come from a good stock and a lot of encouragement. George, no drinking on the job. I'm kidding. It looks like you're having. You are having a nice coffee that looks delicious. Um, <laughs> my you. parents are voiceover actor people, advertising people, musicians, singers. 
So again, I always say that like, if I had come home and said, mom, dad, I want to be a lawyer or doctor, they would have been like, that's insane. You need tap dancing and juggling as a backup. But um, yes, so I, I remember singing around the piano. My grandmother, may she rest in peace, was so, um, she was like, you have to better have good breath control. You know, so I knew, t I, I knew, I knew what I knew. There wasn't a, even another option. Like I just knew from, I think doing three blind mice is the lady that would boss people around in that three blind right. mice in like fourth grade, that that's what I was going to do. So, um, yeah, so to, to, I can't, I can't underscore the importance of training. Like everyone now is like, Hey, you just have to have a cool voice. And yeah, some yeah. of the spots bother me because it sounds like, they, uh, you know, like a young person just woke up and needs a Sudafed and has never had any training. So yes, that vibe is that, that is still sort of trending. That's what I hear on the air, but you have to still be able to be directable. You have to understand to make different choices. You have to know who you're talking to and why, even if it's just like, you know, a mascara commercial or for Toyota, like a Prius, you're going to book the jobs because you have some acting background, some improv background. So, you, so that when they say like, what's your point of view? Like I just signed with the great new commercial agent. She was like, tell me your interests. Like what, what cell carrier do you have? What car do you drive? Like you have to be able to relate to what you're mm. talking about. It's right. not just, you know, voiceovers, it's voice acting. You have to be a good voice actor. And I think so many people forget that. And a lot of times, and also the reason to train is we're at home. We are at yeah. home. And so you have to be like, oh my God, you know, I have five minutes to do this audition. I forgot, or I, um, I don't want to do this audition or I don't relate to it. It's poorly written. It's overly written. Right. So your acting skills have to come in. Like there was a guy I was coaching and it was for some like cool Dyson uh, vacuum and it sounded very much like a Tesla commercial, like just very cool and ergonomic this and, you know, just sounded kind of new agey and awesome. And I, and I said, pretend it's a Tesla. And then his read was amazing. Right. So it's like, how can we hook, find a hook? How can we find our way in to hook into that spot to where it's meaningful to you in some way? Again, there's going to be copy that you don't like, and the spec is going to go on for a half a page. And you're like, what? Just, just tell me what you want here. <laughs> so I think that's um, the reason why training is just of utmost importance. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like you were saying, there's so many people who are getting into the business and they, like you're saying, it's like, well, I just read. Well, it's not that at all. And the reason you're successful is because a, a life, a lifelong learning uh, of, of, of your craft and people forget that it's a craft, that it is professional acting and uh, they, they need to know what, you know, what it takes to, to succeed in it. I mean, what do you think it really takes to succeed? I mean, if somebody wants to get into it, I would imagine first you have to really want it for starters. You have to want it more than anything else. And you have to also have a ridiculous amount of patience and your expectations have to, I'm just going to be really frank, right? Your expectations have to be wildly low at the same time that you're like, this is my thing. Um, and not that you can't, man, I'm a big woo woo hippie dippy person on law of attraction and manifesting things and making sure you stay positive. But you know, out of every 400 things, you may get a call back. I mean, it's just practice makes perfect. And the at bats um, are just an opportunity. I feel like, you know, if you can look at voiceover as my job is to stay in good vocal shape, mental, spiritually good shape so that, you know, you get, we get hired and fired every day. I think people think that we're just on series and we don't have to audition anymore. I just was right. I had to go do a couple things before we did our setup here to check, make sure we were all connected. And I was using the correct, you know, AirPods and all that stuff, which I should know. And I'm not tech savvy at all, which is embarrassing, but, um, um, I think that, you know, tenacity and really believing in yourself and for non-union folks, like I really am still such a strong union supporter. I can't, I can't stress it enough. You, cutting your teeth on the non-union sites is really important. And you, you learn some ball busting marketing techniques, but it's also being able to say to your agents, like, you know, can you listen to the read? Like I asked my agents a couple, this was like maybe last year. And I asked Trish at DPN who I'm, I just, who I adore and she said, you know, it's really knowing your voice too. And she said, you know what? You've got a warm, deeper voice. And so you don't need to add on. Let's just say it was for like something healthcare related. She's like, you don't need to add on any more warmth. Your voice sounds like that anyway, right? So um, I have a good friend of mine, Austin, who's just, she's, she's a cool millennial. She's got a cool, scratchy voice. And, um, and she always sounds mad. And the irony is that she's the happiest person. Right. So I said, you just always have to keep a smile in your cheekbones, just in the apple of your cheeks. So it's really important to also know your voice and be able to express to your agent, hey, do you have any feedback for me? It's been a minute. And she was like, I'm so glad you asked. Actually, it sounds a little too precious. So don't add mm. any other yummy on. So you really have to know your voice. 
and you have to ask for feedback, but don't bug your agents all at the same time. You know what I mean? So I think that's mm. a big part of it. Bit of and a balance staying, there. Yeah. 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 And as your voice and knowing where your voice is like, I don't have super strong vocal cords. Like I'm not a great screamer. So I have to warm up every day. I warm up before and afterwards. And if I forget, I'm like, oh, crap. So it's really knowing your voice and the limitations. And as we get older, our voices change. You know, so I'm a big person about vocal hygiene. I can't stress enough. Where do I have it? It's on my desk and Finn will not leave my site. But the singing straw, if you go on Instagram or Facebook, these straws help you phonate properly. Finn, do you want to show the example? And we all need um, to phonate as well as we can. That's exactly right. That's what she said. <laughs> but just going like, and I'm like rusty today. So it's a matter of like just doing some simple glides and, the singing straw, I cannot recommend it highly enough. What's um, special about it? It just looks like a normal stainless steel drinking straw. It's it's a very fine. Uh, oh, it's an even smaller hole. It's a very yeah. small. And okay. so basically gotcha. you're phonating and just. You're just literally phonating and the vocal cords come together in a healthy way. So huh. it's great to do after a job. It's great to wake up and do that for singer speaker, for any professional speaker, because you know how tired you get. I mean, like at conventions or talking over somebody at a bar, which I'm sure I'll be ready to do maybe next year. Um, mm -hmm. That's what does it for me. That's what fatigues my voice, right? So All I think right. it's, um, it, the, the, if you look it up, you know, phonating through a straw has been around for forever and it helps your voice recover quicker. It helps relax your cords. It helps them be more efficient. And so it's learning like what works. Like for me, like I can't have more than one cup of coffee before a session. There's no way it dries me out so much, right? So I have all the fun things like Entertainer Secret. I know not to have a lot of Ricola or Hall's cough drop or Tic Tacs or gum. All that stuff dries my vocal cords out. So I think vocal hygiene is really, really important because, and I think really having your craft down in a way and also staying in community, like forming and getting into workout groups because we're, we're, we're alone. No, we're at home alone. So you have to be able to like be your own director and be your biggest cheerleader and step out of the booth, take breaks. Like I'm not good at taking breaks. So did I take a break? To, did I take a break today? I took like a three minute break. And I think it's so <laughs> powerful to take a break and just go outside, do 10 deep breaths, come back inside. You have to take a break because right now I think we're all we're all our nerves are still a little raw. And I know for me, I'm like, I'm just going to push through. I'm going to push through. But then I'm not effective in my own auditions. I'm not paying attention to what I'm saying. I'm not acting. I'm not thinking about anything except like, oh, I need to get this done. Because my brain tells me that during this crazy time, if I can control something, I'll feel good. I'll feel safe. I'll feel better. It's not true. You got to take your time with your stuff. And also the, the importance of staying in class and staying sharp is that you trust your instincts to where you're like, hold on, let me listen. Yep. Take two. The lady that I produce demos with and work with a lot, Susan Palio at Voice Tracks West, she always says, send take two. You know, if you're in the booth and you've gone past take four, you're done. You're yeah. done. Send take two and be done. Unless it's just some industrial thing and you're like, oh my God, I cannot get my mouth around this technical jargon or some mm. medical, you know, something like that that's hard to say or pronounce. Other than that, sometimes my best work is under pressure because I automatically do what I know to do as a, as a voice actor, scan the copy for what's it about. You know, with commercials, it's going to be a new feature, a new, you know, a new, um, a new ingredient for promos. It's going to be a new time or just telling us it's a new, this guest is on, you know, um, an animation, the stakes are high because I want to banish the, the queen. Or I want to banish the princess from the, the queendom, the, the kingdom. So there's always like, what is a copy about? Whether it's promo, commercial, animation, an e-learning thing, a book, an explainer video. And then who am I talking to and why? Can I make it very relatable? Sometimes I'll put my hand up right here to keep it intimate. So I'm like the new Toyota Prius, not the new Toyota Prius. That's not, that's talking to like no one, right? So mm. um, that's really helped a lot with like a sort of self-direction vibe of being um, at home and really just knowing that like I'm bringing an imaginary someone into the booth with me. In fact, George, since we both love animals and we're veg vegan people, I had to do something about the great white shark and catching them. And I was like, George, you're never going to get this. You, I mean, you, you won't even believe it. So talking myself in, right. I learned that from the wonderful Mary Lynn Wisner and I, I graciously uh, plagiarize her for all intents and purposes. And then I will edit that out. And I have to listen back to make sure I wasn't like, George, guess what? For some like show, you know, <laughs> um, but I always try to talk myself in. And then that really helps keep me focusing on one person that I'm talking explain to. That, uh, right. Explain that talking. Uh, you just demonstrated, but explain the, the jargon right. of it, the talking yourself in. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so let's say it's especially for commercials. Well, for both commercials and animation, I find. So talking to yourself in, let's say the new Toyota Prius, anything in commercial retail, like how do I make that normal sounding with introducing the all new for a limited time only, only at McDonald's, those things are so commercial retail-y, right? Yeah. So if I can get a point of view, if I can be like, oh my gosh, you know, I've always had a Prius. So it's at least the one thing I can do. You know what? I want that new color. Oh, and it has a four wheel drive and I want the sunroof back, the new Toyota Prius. Then I'm already having a point uh. of view about the product place or thing that I'm talking about or to. Um, in animation, if my first line is like, I said, get out over my dead body. Will you reach my daughter? Try crossing this moat. I, I can't do that without sort of going, oh, really? Well, I slept with your, with your father, the king, and there's no way you're going to get to my daughter because I've just braided her hair and tied it to the bedpost. Over my dead body, will you make it a... <laughs> you have to have something. That's awful. That's awful what I just said. But <laughs> to have said something, But it's never going to be heard on the actual... No, I, <laughs> that's you, and right. that's the other thing. You always cut it out or do you sometimes oh, leave always. it in? Always, always cut it out? Okay. But with, with animation, I definitely leave some improv. We want to hear a vocalization. We want to have that first line. If the first line is... Um, you know, Prince Lancelot, over my dead body, will you get to my daughter? It can't start that way. It has to be like, ah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she has to see him, have a feeling, have a vocalization, because we don't just do that. We go, oh, <laughs> yeah. over my dead body. There has to yeah. be life happening, especially because, A, that's what real people do, but in imaginary circumstances. And B, you're not trying to be funny or add on a bunch of shtick or improv if it's not called for. But when the casting director executives are hitting play that has to be like whoa that's wow i'm i'm in it i'm in the the scene right now right. especially for animation and with with the, this promo thing that i just did about like the great sharks it had to that's why it had to be like very now it was like very now urgent um thank god they wanted a nice you know older lower sounding voice that was intense and dramatic but i had to make sure it wasn't just like the shark the white shark is it us i was like george you're never going to believe this the white shark has it so it was inviting from the get-go oh wow i cannot stress talking yourself in and editing it out and there's like your there's like your director you can be your own director and you can be your own scene partner so that the microphone can just simply capture your acting you don't have to do anything extra you don't have to do anything else especially because this real read is not going away anytime soon right. you know yeah we're talking with Lori Allen here on Voice Over Body Shop. If you've got a question, again, throw it in the chat room. If you're on Clubhouse, throw it in there. And uh, we're going to take a quick break so she can feed her dog. And uh, we can sell some stuff and keep the show going. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here on Voice Over Body Shop. Ooh, I think I heard the Voice Over Body Shop. I did. I did hear the Voice Over Body Shop. Beetle Body Shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. We've been sequestered for over a year, forced to watch undubbed Turkish soap operas. <laughs> And face it, we're all zoomed out. But now it's time to get back on the road again. And if you have to record your voiceover tracks on the road, there's no better way than to use a Harlan Hogan Portabooth Plus. With one zipper assembly in seconds and lined in Orlex Studio Foam, the Portabooth Plus is your answer to professional recordings on the road. And because summer travel and remote recording are finally back, here's VoiceOver Essentials' gift to you. 
Buy a Porta Booth Plus, and the first 50 buyers will get their fabulous Porta Booth Plus travel bag absolutely free. There is, however, a limit of four booths with the free travel bag per customer. So go on over to voiceoveressentials.com and just click on the Porta Booth Plus Carry On Travel Bag Buy Now button. No promo code needed. Hey there, Hero. It's David H. Lawrence, the 17th. And for the last eight years, wow. Dan O'Day and I have been teaching the ACX Masterclass. Our students are responsible for over 4,000 books that are available on audible.com via ACX. And if you know that you want to be an audiobook narrator, if you know you want to add that to your voiceover quiver, we'd love to have you in the course. This course is amazing. And Dan came up with an idea that made me question what he had done with the real Dan O'Day. He said, hey, look, for this week, Let's offer a two-payment plan at the lowest price anyone will pay for the course. They make one payment now and another payment just before class starts, and they're in. And I'm like, great, let's do this before you change your mind. So go to acxmasterclass.com slash 2PMT. That's the link you see below. If you know you want to build a successful audiobook narration career, we would love to have you. acxmasterclass.com slash 2PMT. And we will see you in the ACX Masterclass Home Study Edition this June. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez. And you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voiceover Body Shop. I like tight, that we're enjoying Tight, them. tight. That's the way this that show is going to be. great, you guys. We're enjoying. Yes. I get to do like name that uh, VO talent. I got a lot. <laughs> I got a lot right. That was are, yeah, well, it helps when the name is actually on there, but um, yeah, that's what I was going to say too. That helps. <laughs> We're talking with Lori Allen. We got uh, we got a bunch of questions from uh, from our vast worldwide audience. Uh, first, who is the, who is the vocal coach we were talking about? Oh, Amy um, Chapman, I think is the one. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Yes, Amy Chapman. I was going to try to bring it up on my phone. Amy Chapman is awesome. So I saw her when I had some vocal trouble, and. Um, She's phenomenal because she talks a lot about laryngeal massage. And I can even show people it looks kind of kinky and weird or that it's not actually going to do anything. But when you've had a stressful uh, session, even if it's just audiobooks and you've been talking for forever or animation where you've done a character where you take off like this or pearl, something like that, that area has to be relaxed. So it's like you can pull your larynx down and actually look up at the ceiling and, and lick the ceiling. Again, it looks very strange and inappropriate, but... And it, you come back down and you go one, two, three, four, five, and your voice feels very different. And actually just rubbing in here and rubbing the muscles and really just even just during a session when you go outside to take your break, just relaxing that neck area because this can't help but get involved a bit. So I really love Amy Chapman and that's where I learned about the singing straw. And you can find out her information there. She's on Instagram and Facebook, but she helped me get my voice back and she works with a lot of people. It really helps extend your range. So if you've got a low voice like me, all of a sudden with speaking and singing, I was like, I'm not a high soprano, but I have a much better range now. And my voice is more efficient and healthier. And she talks a lot about like, listen, if you've had COVID and, or you have allergies or, you know, just go back into singing and speaking gently and easily and don't be hard on yourself. And she answers a lot of questions like, is it okay to do CBD? You know, is it okay? What does stress do to your voice? What does certain food do to your voice? Are you actually hydrating too much or not enough? So she's a plethora of resources and it's Voice Lab LA. Wow. So I love Amy and um, she's wonderful. And then um, I'm having a total brain fart, but I'm going to look it up uh, to find the gal who does the singing straw because right. that's been a huge game changer um, as yeah, well. Yeah, I found the website. It's just literally singingstraw.com. Yeah, and I'm having a brain fart at her name, which is horrible. Um, it's Mindy Mindy Pack. Whitney Nicole. Min, Mindy Pack. Or no, I think it's Whitney Nicole. Whitney Nicole. Um, okay. Mm-hmm. And she'll right. just send out just just great, just great, 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 great things. And she also talks about sort of how to to rehab your voice with the singing straw and has great examples. So what's nice is that they're actually both just very generous with their time and their TikTok videos and you know, all the stuff that, P- and I know a lot of VO talent that goes to see Amy and now that she can see people safely. I mean, you lay down on the table and get your, this whole area worked out. So when I had a, a vocal episode of several, like three or four years ago, it took like two sessions with her and I was fine. And I was like, oh my God, thank you. So much better than any vocal rest because vocal rest is just not possible. Yeah. Like that's, that actually is not good for your voice. If you've had surgery, I had surgery in high school. You got to be quiet. You got to be on vocal rest and you have to watch your voice. Like I love hearing, um, 
think Kelly Clarkson and John Legend were talking on The Voice about how they both really do vocal rest. So there's a time where you should absolutely rest your voice. And st steam is your best friend. And, um, you know, no, steam and making sure that you're not having stuff that's going to dry your cords out. And using that singing straw is a big, huge uh, yeah. game changer. All right. We got questions here. Uh, George, okay. you want to tackle Mr. Hungry Boy's question? I want to tackle mine first. Oh, okay. okay. And mine was about um, what it was like recording, or what is it like oh. if it's still going, recording SpongeBob Camp Coral from home? What is that like? Are you doing it ensemble? Are there others on the session with you? How are they doing it? Et cetera. Yeah, great question. So um, thanks to my new booth set up from you because Nickelodeon requested a better uh, sound, which was great. Um, so thank you for that always. And um uh, so no, 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 don't jump out of my lap thing. Cause you're going to go bark at something. So, um, um, the Nickelodeon sent me a, a nice setup and I don't think I'll have to give it back. So thank you, Nickelodeon. And, um, what we do is what's so great is the, the, um, we actually are using an Apogee mic, which you wouldn't think that they'd be using, but that way everybody sounds the same. It's the hype mic. And, it's the newest one that they came right. out with. And there's it's a actually specific quite reason they picked it. I'll tell you why in a second. Oh, tell me. Keep going. Okay. Okay. So basically what we do is we get a link. Um, we get a link the night before to look or a couple of days before to look at the storyboards and your voice script. And I always read the voice script first, not because I'm lazy, but because I just want to get a gist of it. And then it still is so fun. There's nothing more fun than looking through. It's probably about 200 pages, but you get to now it's easier to scroll. And, but I still wow. have the good old hard copies of these big sheets that they messenger to you the night before. Hmm. But anyway, you click on the link and then somebody does like what you do, George, for clients. They'll take over TeamViewer and launch GarageBand. Uh, make sure I have to switch from my Sennheiser to the Hype mic. And um, and then you're on a Zoom and most likely they they will upload everything. They kind of do it for you, which is great. Yeah. But I make sure that I've switched everything over from one interface to the other and all the preferences and whatnot. And I have to move the mic and I have to adjust me and the mic and myself. And then you got to kind of jiggle things around if you don't have the. I don't have the space for a big screen. So I make sure that I move it around. And then half the time I have to turn the zoom um, off the, 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 the what do you call it the visual. Thank you. Camera. Yeah, yeah. Um, because it takes up a lot of energy and then the computer inevitably, I don't care what computer is, it just gets hot. Yeah. And the engineers, I can just see them moving it up and down. It's like having a phantom, you know, but it's great. And then you upload it and it takes a while and then you're done. So it's really cool. And no, we don't get to be there together, which really sucks. But Tom has energy for 17 people. So there's usually the executives on the phone and the engineers and Tom and the writer of the episode. So it's not, it's not done ensemble live. You're no. recorded independently of each other. Correct. Yeah. And then we and get to the, clap together in slate. And that's always fun. Yeah. <laughs> so the reason, yeah, the reason why that hype mic is it, this is one of the few microphones that sounds really good, is simple to hook up and is also remote controllable. So what oh, Lori was yeah. saying was okay. they can control the mic gain from their studio. And that makes it very easy for them because they no longer have to worry about you worrying about the gain. They can do it. And so, yeah. And I think it's a good cool. mic in terms of travel setup too, because it's really, if I can figure it out, as George can attest to for over 10 years of friendship and working together, <laughs> if I can figure it out, anybody can figure it out. So I, I was like, what? And, and then you're right. It's, a, and it, I was listening to the sound. Sounds great. Sounds yeah. absolutely fine. Sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, we got any questions from Clubhouse there, George? Uh, I believe we got one lined up. What do we What's got, up, Danny? guys? We do. Chris Rossetti from San Francisco. Chris. Hello, everybody. Great show. Great information. I feel like I owe somebody some money. Cha-ching. <laughs> we, we have a donate now button, so. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Chris, how are you? Oh, really, really good. I just had to attend to our kitty cat. She's about 17 years old, and she had some issues. But I'm listening to you, oh, and I baby. have a couple of questions for you yes uh, well uh, one question actually um with your diet uh being vegan do you have a recommendation for people who are not in other words are there certain foods you can tell everybody look give this up if you're a voice actor and i'll go to the audience to hear your answer i have a strange impulse to buy a new toyota prius thank you <laughs> <laughs> good um absolutely you got to ditch dairy because it's just first of all it's another species milk and we're not meant to do with it so that's why everyone's like i don't digest that very well and i get phlegmy and it's that's the body's natural response to deal with inflammation in your in your body not just your vocal cords and um so and, and no one can digest it so that's why there's all these you know uh lactate or whatever that's called all the sort of faux milk you may as well 
drink something like oat milk or almond milk or soy milk or something like that, hazelnut milk, first of all, it's got the same amount of protein, if not more, and it's much better for you. And it doesn't produce that sort of inflammatory reactive, <clears throat> that thing where I've got to get it out of my body because it shouldn't be in there anyway. And the other thing, um, so that's goes for any dairy related things and to just promote veganism for a minute. Like it's, you know, you would, like I did something for Mercy for Animals the other day. Um, it's their 22nd anniversary. It's like, make the connection, right? We all love our pets, like your beautiful 17 year old. And I hope she's going to be okay. We put that with our other animals and you go, oh, wow, I don't want to, I don't need to, to be ingesting that. And um, also I've always had a, a, a gluten intolerance. Like since I was little, my stomach, I, my mom took me to a pediatrician when I was like two and a half. And the doctor was like, you got to get her off uh, wheat because that again, I found it doesn't really have any nu nutritional value and it's inflammatory. And it just causes your whole, not only like joints and everything like that, but your vocal cords are a muscle, right? So you want to keep anything you can do to keep this area hydrated and irritation free. So for me, I'm so damn sensitive to like onions and eggplant and garlic and tomatoes. Like you have to know what stuff, um, any foods that have histamine in them, which is a lot of seafood and chocolate and wine. So you have to think, okay, if I've got a big set of auditions coming up or a session, you want to avoid all that stuff. Foods that have histamine in them, gluten, um, dairy, any dairy products. Um, so that way you're not going to have any, even any GERD reflex, you know, like the acid reflux, like, oh my gosh, such a nervous tummy to boot as well. You want to keep all that stuff at bay, have a healthy tummy and healthy sinuses are really good. So saline your, um, you know, all your, your nasal stuff and gargle with some salt water. And then you're really sort of getting, getting everything clean and clear to be able to have a nice sound, good, clear sound. Yeah. George, Hungry Boy's question. He's been waiting patiently. Oh, yeah. This one's from the chat. He says, um, what is Lori's favorite? There's a U in there, so we know where he's from. Um, what is your favorite mic to be recorded by or just for hearing the timbre of your own voice? Do you have an well, opinion about what mic you like to be <laughs> that, that's, that's recorded you, with? That's, that's your job. Yeah, exactly. No, I don't um, know. I did. I'm going to see I'm what Lori darling. has to say. I love the sound of my own voice with my Sennheiser, <laughs> I have to say. Um, I know a, a voiceover manager that I work with. He's like, oh, we need to get you on a Neumann. And I, I remember talking to you, George, about that. And I think I love, I love this. What do I have? Sennheiser 416? Is that what I have? 416. So that sounds so glorious, I think, for, for women. It just, it catches so much um, resonance without sounding like, um, what's the word? Not muffled, but without it sounding like too, it, it's just a freer muddy. sound. It doesn't, huh? Maybe muddy? Like yeah, muddy or like it almost muddle, sounds muddle? stifled to me. Like mm -hmm. I've got too many headphones on or it sounds like I have a second mm -hmm. set of headphones on. It doesn't sound as, mm -hmm. you don't get the natural rasp in your voice. Mm -hmm. and, it sounds like me. you. Yeah, which, exactly. which is what we're trying to achieve. Yeah, exactly. especially for now the real read. You've got to find a voice that, uh, I mean, a mic that captures that. And for me, it's always been the Sennheiser. So when you're yeah. using the hype mic, are you plugging the cans into the hype mic to hear yourself in yes. your own? and? How does that yeah. sound to you? It sounds different. It doesn't sound yeah. as good, but when yeah. I listen back to the playback, it sounds okay. It doesn't sound right. to me, it doesn't sound quite as yummy and rich. It doesn't capture right. it all quite like, you know, it's like right. catches like nine out of 10 or eight out of 10. Mm -hmm. um, See, that's so again, the thing. It, this whole thing is a feedback loop, right? Between your voice, the microphone, your headphones and around and around it goes. Yeah. So if and you're even wearing headphones, it depends how loud you monitor yourself and how you work the microphone. And it, it all is a feedback loop. Yeah. Work it. Let me work it. Yes. I think <laughs> that the um, turn around baby and reverse it. Uh -huh. uh, had a little dance break there for is myself. Um, but yeah, that and also your headphones. Like you taught me that, George, as well. And much to my chagrin, I remember I ordered some Audio Technica headphones and I don't like them. So I was like, I got to go back to putting my old ones on and just getting new like re replacement, like, you know, the pads there. Pads. Um, it sounds like I'm like, what? I can't hear myself. What did I just say? And I have the volume turned up for some reason. It's too, uh, it feels like I have, you know, I've been swimming and I have swimmers here. Mm. So it's interesting. You just have to play around and maybe yeah. I could sell them or, you know, something yeah. like that. Give them to a friend who needs a new set of, a yeah. new set of cans. Yeah. Let's see. Nothing, uh, in, nothing in Clubhouse. Okay. Well, David Wandelt asks, how much auditioning do you do now? And what exercises do you go through to quickly get into the headspace for each um, one? I think we covered some of that, but great question, yeah. David. So um, 
um, the, 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 wait, put it back up again to get into the headspace. But what was the first part of that question? I'm what sorry, exercises do you go? Yeah, I, th I think oh. you covered this pretty well. Yeah. Exercises yeah. I do a little headspace. warm up. The best thing you could possibly do is like find someone that you're speaking range or your singing range. You don't have to be a singer or a great singer, but like Bonnie Raitt is like nice and low for me or like Sheryl Crow or Pink, right? And I will literally just dance and sing at the same time. And then my body and my breath is moving, right? Because we're sitting down a lot more. My body and breath and voice are sort of connected now, even just one song. And you get your endorphins raised, even if it's a serious thing you're auditioning for. Do a little bit of the singing straw. Get in there, making sure you know who you're talking to and why. Have a point mm -hmm. of view about the product, the show, the character that you're talking. In animation, you're definitely talking at any time. You're definitely, almost always, you're talking to at least two people. You're talking to or about two people. So again, it comes down to the acting. So um, who are you talking to? Why are you talking to them? What's your point of view? Um, is And also try to stay in a very real sort of way of speaking. Um, and uh, and bring your dog in the booth. No, I'm just kidding. I have actually had to bring him in the booth to help him not wreck auditions. Mm, good, so I good hope idea. that's helpful, David. Yeah. Now, one of the other things we want to talk to you about is coaching. And J. Horace Black uh, asks, uh, "Glad to see you're healthy and well. Are uh, you doing any do. one? Are you doing any one-on-one -on -one coaching? And if yes, do you approach each actor and talent the same way? How is your schedule if you are coaching? <laughs> oh, my schedule is good. I have not. Shh, shh, nope, nope. You're not a voice actor. This is my time, not your time. Good boy. Uh, yes, I do coach. I love coaching. I find it. Um, I find it keeps me sharp and it keeps me doing something creative and not worrying about why am I not booking? Why am I booking? Who else is booking instead of me or whatever? So I feel like it's always important to be in some kind of training, even if it's an improv class. Are you taking a writing class? Are you taking pottery, like doing something creative so that not everything depends on, did I get this job? That's not exactly what you asked, but it's just something I wanted to, oh, all right, I'm letting them outside. Hold on. Oh my God. Get that squirrel. Get it, baby. Get out of my face. Squirrel. Oh my God. Go sorry about that. Dog. So, um, sorry about that. So in, in terms of coaching, I think it's so good to, I really like, especially for somebody who's new is to take class. And at the same time, if, you know, as, of course, as money and time allow to be able to take a private, it's kind of like puts you like on a fast track. And so I really like that. So for me, taking somebody who's never done voiceover, but who's willing to take an improv class, um, it doesn't matter what level you're at. Um, as long as you're sort of willing, right? If you're willing to, to, to take in some new information. And I come at it from a very, uh, I know some people come at things from a more structured standard place about pronouns and marking your script up. I'm the exact opposite because mm. nobody feels and thinks or communicates the same way. So I have some very standard stuff that I talk about and teach. And I have this lady called the Booth Lady, which beautiful Matthew Thompson, a, cl a client of mine. So I have this, when the real read came in, I remember being in the booth at my agent's office and she was like, you know what? just talk like how you're talking right now. And it was for like old Navy or something. Great example of talking yourself in instead of like, you know, now through January 3rd, the pajama bottom sale two for one, who doesn't want a uh, pajama bottoms only at old Navy. And it just sounded really silly. So I was like, okay, wait a second. So, so I thought to myself, okay, my sister and my cousins and I, we all do like uh, my good girlfriends, we all do like $20 and under and who doesn't want pajama bottoms. So the all new pajama bottom set came out nice and smooth. And she was like, just talk like how you talk, just give me some information. So I came home and wrote myself and be talking to someone, right? So I wrote a little stick figure because I'm a terrible artist is an understatement. And I just had little bubbles, like cartoon bubbles saying, talk to me, talk myself in, talk like how I talk. And then I just have on here different things about, you know, observe. That's the other thing. Like, are you observing the product? Like when I redid my demo, Mary Lynn was wonderful with Tim Friedlander. And I remember she, it was for like Lara Bar or something. And she was like, can you like look at the, um, just look at your phone and pretend you're reading the ingredients. You know, and I was like, I'm making this up, but whatever it is, you know, 100% whole grain oats and da 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 da, you know, Lara Bar for active lifestyle. I'm making up this, not the copy, but you get the gist of it. So I approached the same, my basic curriculum because I'm so ADD. Like my curriculum is something that is not over a certain period of time you learn X, Y, and Z. I kind of throw everybody this and then whatever kind of sinks in, whatever works for you. And that's why I like coaching is I'm like, what, what works for you? Is it, observing the product? Is it making sure you have an opinion about something? Is it making sure that the person is right there? Do you need to put like a doll or your own action figure in the booth so that you're really talking to someone? You're like the new Toyota Prius. You got to get it, badass boss. You're amazing, right? So 
there's a bunch of different things. Um, and an animation, like I would always say, like, I have to hear the relationship. If you're playing some young girl and you're like this valley girl, I'm, I would never get cast this age, right? But she can't just be like typical. Like maybe we work on characters from your real life that you went to school with or what you sounded like when you were little or, you know, um, mm. kids at school or whatever, and find a way to to draw from people you already know in your own life and then have those kind of creep into your your reads for animation right. specifically. I love doing that. I love doing that yeah. with people. It's so fun to come up with your list and finding different celebrities, male, female, um, um, dialects you do well or don't do well. We're not going to know if you're doing a really bad Austria, Austria, like Arnold Schwarzenegger impression. But I know when I played this lesbian gym teacher, that was very funny. And <laughs> I know when I did Huggle Monsters, it said she's a very dingy mom. And one of the ladies on my list was Goldie Hawn. I love Goldie Hawn. Um, and so I really like the way she doesn't end her sentences. They just kind of hang there for no reason. And then it said she had to be very warm. So I just did my kind of best Goldie Hawn. And then I just added some warmth. And that made her sound like a kind of dingy, but very lovable mom. Right. So um, that's the kind of the way I teach is like adding in some different emotions and um, and really coming up with a, a list, a cast of characters that you already know. And then you're not thinking so much about how do I sound? Oh, right. I, I, this isn't a good take you're on the train once you know who you're talking to and why. And if you plugged in and found a way to get in there with the script, if you don't like it or you're tired or you can't relate to it, whatever with a character, especially for animation, then you're going to, then you're going to be able to just have much more fun with it. Right. And the more fun you're having, the more we're going to have fun listening to it. And the more likely you are, you're going to get a great booking callback. Yeah. Well, speaking of fun, this hour has been a fun ride as always, but amazingly it has gone by. <laughs> Whoosh. No. Did we miss yeah. any questions? I'm so sorry. No, we got we got them all in there. Okay. So uh, that's the most important thing. Uh so uh if someone wants to contact you for coaching and now your inbox is going to be shoved full of stuff. Yay. How would how My would pleasure. somebody get a hold of you? Uh coach me at lauriallen.com. There we go. I can there put it go. in the chat there. You can. Yeah. Coach me at lauriallen.com. Excellent. All right. Yeah. Thanks for being with us. I, I, I can't wait till we can get so together much. personally soon. It would be great. Well, I'm I'm Vax baby, so you know I'm not ready to go out into a restaurant or or a big huge party just yet. Um, but I would love to see you guys, and I love you so much. We love you Thank too. You. Okay. All right. Thanks for always having right. your show and just keeping us all connected. I always learn something, and I'm just so grateful that you guys are my friends and having me on. I so appreciate it. No problem. All righty, Lori Allen, everybody. Yeah. We'll be right back to wrap things up and to uh, to rack it up for Tech Talk right after this. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Speaking of pain in the you-know-what, that is trying to learn how to use something you've never used before when everybody says, you got to have it. And one of those things that everybody's telling you you've got to have, as, as I am now, is Source Connect. Um, Source Connect is a tool that will allow you to connect to studios around the world so they can record you from your studio in their studio. And they're going to capture your audio as it's recorded, as it's heard from your microphone. So it's really like you're on the other side of the glass but you're on the other side of the internet. And it's a, it's an amazing technology. It's been around a long time and it's been maturing uh, for quite a long time. So it's highly popular, highly supported, and um, actually relatively affordable now because you can do a subscription. 
Um, and that's the way I recommend it for most folks because then you'll have access to their support ongoingly, which by the way, is the best in the business, hands down. They have incredibly good on-demand support teams for supporting you um, and to keep your sessions running smoothly. So you really should get started. If you're not sure about getting subscribed now and getting really making any commitment, you can get a demo for 15 days um, and plunge headfirst into trying to get it running yourself and kind of go through the step-by-step -step information they provide. And, um, and if you get stuck along the way, I have some stuff on my site at georgethe.tech on Source Connect to kind of get your, help you along. Anyway, that's Source Connect. Thanks for your support, Source Settlements. And uh, we'll be back to wrap up the show right after this quick little spot. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Well, it's always a delight having her on. You know, it I, is. It's always sad when they when we get to the end of the segment. It's like, bye. Wait, I yeah. can't say hello. I can't say goodbye later. It's it's all right. We'll over. get the chance eventually. Anyway, uh, we have got uh, we've got to thank a lot of people. And uh, but first, next week on this very show, if you're hanging out with us, uh, we're we're about to record it now. Is Tech Talk number fifty seven? We got a lot of cool stuff to talk about. If you've got a question, you can throw that in the chat room right now too, as well, which would be great. Um, who are our donors this week? Since somebody mentioned that earlier. I am going to read them to you. Okay. Because I was looking at the wrong screen. Uh, ah. Robert Leadham, Christy Burns, Graham Spicer. Graham, what's up? He's still giving us money. Uh, Antland Productions, that's Uncle Roy. Michelle Blanker, Sarah Borges, and Christopher Epperson. Those are all the easy names I get to read. <laughs> the, yeah. Next week's are the harder ones. Um, but why do I keep reading these names over and over? Why is that happening? Well, that's because they are subscribers using PayPal's subscribe function. Um, you can make a one-time thing if you got a tip that was really important to you from that guest. Drop a little money in there, or you can subscribe like these folks and have your name read all the you know every week. And top of mind, you never know. It could get yeah. you a gig. I'm not saying anything, but it could help you. You know, name recognition Thanks. never hurts. That's right. Speaking of Michelle Blanker, she get you know she had given me a uh, a handlebar mustache face mask like three years ago, and she was selling those. And I found it year and a half into a pandemic. Then I find it. Oh no way! <laughs> now it's prominently in my car whenever I have to put on a mask. Anyway, uh, hey, join our mailing list. Uh, it's almost up to eight hundred. We'd like to get a thousand uh, before the end of the year or sooner. Um, also, we need to thank our sponsors, Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials. Oh, we also have a uh, voiceover extra source elements, voheroes.com voice actor websites.com and JMC demos. Um, we also need to thank uh, Danny Burnside over at uh, clubhouse for running his show. And uh, we're we looking do. forward, yes. looking thank forward you. to joining him again for tech talk right after this. And of course, our technical director, Sue Merlino, doing it perfectly tonight, as she always does. And of course, and especially so, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny this week. <laughs> well, we're gonna, week. yeah, we're gonna we're gonna reset it for Tech Talk right now. Um, but gotta remind you guys, your voiceover business is not easy. But when it comes to your audio, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard, by the way. I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover body shop or V O B S. That's right. Tech talk coming up. Take care. Have a good week. <laughs>